Hello and welcome back. In this series, I want to go through the entire Ilias campaign. I will not only explain the campaign quests and their meaning for the world of Atreya, but also tell you about all the important characters and their personal story. We will also include special places of interest that you always wondered about. And lastly, I will explain all the dungeons, their backstory, the reason we go and kill everything there, and how we follow up on our tasks after the dungeon. So lean back, relax, and let's start. Our journey continues in Altnan at the Golden Bow Garrison. Here we talk to Castor, the Golden Bow Brigade General. He tells us that one of the main objectives here is to explore the Arakus Temple Cavern. It is still a mystery how our ancestors managed to build such an enormous temple underground. And we are also uncertain about its purpose and which Imperial Lord it was dedicated to. But over the years the temple has disintegrated. Now they want to make an effort to restore it and hopefully learn more about our ancient ancestors. Our task will be to restore the walls. So we can examine the engravings and perhaps find out which Imperial Lord the temple was constructed for. However, we cannot go into the Arrakis temple yet. Treasure hunters come here all the time, hoping to find valuable things in the Rakus temple cavern, but this place is home for many dangerous creatures, and many who go there, carelessly, are killed. The Brigade General Castor built an etheric field to control access to the temple, and in order to gain access, people have to face a small challenge. Thanks to this, there are way less people that die in there now. The task is simple. Kill Dune Basilisks and Stone Shell Xalots. If you can't beat those, you won't stand a chance against the dangerous creatures in the Arakus Temple Cavern. After finishing this, re-report to Castor and gain access to the temple. So we move in, collect the wall fragments and repair them. This triggers some type of fireworks with a couple of strange words we can't quite understand. As we report this to Castor, he tells us that this is the ancient Atreian language from before the Cataclysm. He understands a couple of words, birthday, playground and a name, Karun. Turns out the Arrakis Temple Cavern wasn't a temple at all, but a playground for a child named Karun. But what kind of deva could make such an immense secret playground for their kid? To find this answer, we make our way to the library, and after some reading, we found two very interesting books on the topic. One of the books is called Legend of Altnan Free, and right out mentions Karun's Playground. The Imperian Lords represented Aeon's will, and the complex nature of Aeon became apparent in the behavior of his agents. The Lords soon formed alliances and enmities with one another. Two Imperial Lords were especially close to each other. No one knows what made them break the taboo. The two Imperial Lords loved each other. They met as frequently as possible, while evading the suspicions of others. When the love produced a child, they were overwhelmed by both joy and fear. The child was a true blessing. He let them know true happiness. They named him Karun. Although they were unable to care for Karun directly, the two Imperial Lords wanted to do something for him, as any parent would. Thus, they built a playground for Karun, the biggest and most wonderful playground in all worlds. They chose a suitable place, far from any other creature, and cast magic spells upon it to prevent any intrusion. No other being could enter the playground, and it became all but invisible. The two Imperial Lords, mother and father to Karun, placed all kinds of creatures in the playground, from tiny grasses to huge monsters. They wanted Karun to experience all aspects of the world, but because his very existence was taboo, he would never be allowed to walk freely, so long as he lived. They had to hide him at all costs. 
At first, Karun thrived inside the huge playground. To him, it seemed to be the entire world. The two Imperial Lords were so busy looking after important affairs in Atreya that they could not visit him frequently. They felt guilty and gave Karun more and more things to overcome their increasing sense of shame. However, the most miserable one was Karun. Left alone in the huge playground, he grew up without anyone to nurture him. He became more and more violent. When he realized the power he had, he began to destroy the playground that his parents had built. He found it delightful to take the lives of the creatures imprisoned with him. The suffering of his toys meant nothing to him. Seeing the change in their child, the two Empyrean lords became filled with regret and anguish. They decided to beg Aeon's pardon and implore him to recognize the child so that he could be freed. Did they decide too late? Or was Aeon's rage too immense? No matter which is true, a catastrophe befell Atreya and Karun's playground became the first victim. Hearing a great thunder, the two Empyrean lords rushed to the playground, only to discover a horrifying sight. The playground was completely destroyed, leaving no trace of life, and Karun was not to be found anywhere. Overwhelmed by grief, Karun's mother screamed in distress. The heartbreaking sound resonated across the land, drawing forth a black rain of grief from the clouds. The two Imperial Lords turned their backs upon the destroyed playground and left. The pain of their grief separated them forever. Thus ends the story of the two Imperial Lords who loved and who gave birth to a child. A story at once terrifying and sorrowful. No one knows what happened after that, but still, somewhere in Atreya are the ruins of the huge playground where their child used to play. And this place is today known as the Arrakus Temple Cavern. But who are the mother and the father of Karun? Which Empyrean Lords is this story about? Well, maybe the second book on this topic, named History of Elton Fortress, tells us more about that. A nameless forest located in the northwestern end of Elton had been well known since ancient times for its lush, abundant flora. Even experienced hunters avoided it because it was so dense that no one could find their way through it. Within the forest was a permanent thick fog that made navigation impossible. Reports of disappearances in this hostile forest kept any sane person from visiting it. However, after an abyss gate was found in Verteron, Sanctum ordered that all missing persons cases be reopened. Obviously, Elton's strange forest immediately became a place of great interest. They suspected that some of the disappearances might be related to an undiscovered abyss gate, so an exploration team was assembled and dispatched to Elton. And intimidated by the thick fog, they kept moving deeper into the forest and arrived in front of an enormous stone wall. When they illuminated the wall with the ether lamps, the stone began to collapse, threatening to bury them under tons of stones. They quickly retreated, and after regrouping, they tried to go past the huge stone walls again and again. But every time they tried it, the stone walls threatened to collapse upon them. It was like a very strange magic trap that tried to deter them from entering. However, after many futile attempts, the group managed to push through, and what they discovered on the other side took their breath away. An indescribably beautiful valley lay before them. Divided by a clear river of fresh water and abundant with food bearing plants and trees. As they got closer to the place where they expected to find an abyss fragment, they found their feet mired in strange magic. Someone was trying very hard to keep them out, but the group refused to stop and their determination paid off. They overcame all the obstacles in their path and found the abyss gate. A fragment of the tower was floating in a cave in a cliffside. Since the Abyss War was in full swing, it was imperative to clean up the area 
and build a fortress. However, the seemingly permanent fog made it very difficult. One day, Lord Nasikan visited the fortress construction site. His unannounced visit surprised everyone there. After examining the site, Lord Nasikan said in a low voice, What must be hidden is already... And then he chanted a spell, which cleared the fog completely. So is Lord Nasikan talking about Karun here? Is he the father of Karun? The answer is... Yes. The Empyrean Lord Nazikan, the Lord of Justice, is the father of the taboo child Karun. And who do you think the mother is? Empyrean Lady Ariel, Eustiel, Lumiel, Treniel, or maybe Lady Seal? It is indeed the Lady of Death, the Empyrean Lady Treniel. So let's recap this. Nazikan and Treniel. They loved each other and had a child. They named him Karun and constructed a huge playground for him. They casted several spells to deter others from going there, like the thick never-ending fog or the many traps that deterred people from coming closer. They had to hide their child there, because a child among Empyrean lords was taboo. To not attract too much attention, they did not have enough time to care and be there for their child. Instead, they showered him with gifts every time they visited him. As the child Karun didn't have anyone that really cared for him or teached him. His behavior changed, he became more violent and started to kill the creatures in his playground. Seeing this change in his behavior, the two parents became more and more worried and decided to beg for Aeon's pardon, hoping Aeon would accept the child. This way, they could free Karun from the playground, teach him, openly spend time with him and stop him from going down this, this horrifying path of killing. Aeon's answer was apparently a great thunder that struck Karun's playground. The two Empyrean lords rushed there, only to find the entire playground destroyed, and Karun was nowhere to be found anymore. A deep sorrow befell them both. Their grief separated them and they did not rekindle their flame ever again. Many years later, the cataclysm happened, and the Empyrean Lords were separated into two groups. While Nesekhan now resides in Elysia as a Seraphim Lord, Triniel is now in Asmodee as a Shedim Lord. Will the two of them unite again? A laugh once so bright has been hushed. Will this light be able to shine again?